All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let us continue. Yeah. Uh, in this part, we are going to uh, continue from the previous uh, clip. Now, what we are going to do to that equation is that we add depreciation. Yeah, on both sides. Yeah. All right. Why do we do that? Okay. Be uh, because yeah, depreciation um, has moment okay let me get the pointer now depreciation uh, is not a cash flow yeah and therefore we add depreciation in order to uh, get the cash flow yeah before this the equation was just uh, accounting income yeah to convert the accounting income to cash flow we add depreciation remember that depreciation is not a cash outflow yeah it is uh, an expense an accounting expense but it is not a cash flow yeah therefore it uh, underestimates yeah the cash inflow therefore we add depreciation yeah, in order to uh, account for this yeah therefore depreciation is added back yeah, into the equation and you do it on both sides of the equation yeah both on the left hand side as well also as the right hand side and this is to maintain the equation so this is what we do okay we add depreciation on the left hand side here we also add depreciation on the right hand side yeah and therefore we maintain the same equation yeah the equation is still equal yeah? it cannot be unequal yeah so we have maintained the right hand side sorry the left hand side and the right hand side yeah, until this portion what we have done is we have added these two elements yeah equal elements on both sides yeah therefore the equation remains yeah all right then what we do is we rearrange yeah why do we rearrange because you we, we rearrange this in order to make it more meaningful yeah we want to come to the cash flow statement so therefore what we have done here this bold equation yeah uh, or equation 14 is we take the elements in equation 13 and just simply rearrange them yeah so you still have two sides the left hand side is a long yeah uh, mixture of uh, uh, many elements here yeah? then on the right hand side you have these four elements yeah so we change the position of these elements in uh, equation 13 yeah to become uh, equation 14 yeah that is all we have done yeah so for example if we take the first element here ebit is from here yeah ebit then you plus depreciation this depreciation with ebit you get this value here okay this depreciation minus tax is taken from here minus tax then minus change in net fixed assets that is from here yeah so here it is positive sign uh, because it's on the left hand side yeah now you bring it over to the right therefore this becomes negative yeah this means negative change in net fixed assets then plus depreciation here this depreciation when you bring it over to the right hand side it becomes negative yeah if you open this bracket okay so this negative multiplied by this positive this becomes negative yeah so minus depreciation yeah and so on yeah so here you have a uh, minus change in current assets so you have current assets here right you bring it over to the right hand side it becomes negative yeah change in current assets then this yeah this is positive this is already on the right hand side okay so you maintain it there but yeah note this yeah you bring this over to uh, because this is negative yeah negative you open bracket this becomes positive yeah so this is remains positive because it's already on the right hand side yeah so this is uh, change in current assets minus change in current liabilities then on the right hand, right hand side okay here uh, already in the on the right hand side it is minus yeah interest so this you bring it over to the left hand side so this becomes interest minus yeah this is on the left hand side you bring it over to the uh, sorry right hand side you bring it to the left hand side it becomes negative yeah long term uh, negative change in long term debt then this yeah this is negative dividend okay uh, and then 
uh, plus yeah, change in common stock, you bring both or to the left hand side in equation 13, this becomes plus dividend, okay, then minus, yeah, this bring it over to the left hand side becomes minus change in common stock, yeah. So basically, it's the same equation, equation 13, we rearrange the elements, yeah. All right, uh, and okay, so, uh, we need to note this as well, yeah. So dividend minus change in common stock, okay, can uh, is the same thing as net income minus change in equity, yeah. Why is that, yeah? Because uh, if you add uh, retained earnings to dividends, it becomes net income. If you add retained earnings to change in common stock, okay, what do you get? You get change in equity, yeah? Therefore, these two are the same, yeah? These two elements, okay, are the same. Uh, so, therefore, you can replace this, yeah, with this, yeah? So, we have this equation here. Uh, you can't see the equation very clearly, yeah? Let me just bring it down here. Okay, now you can see it. Okay, uh, equation 16. So, it's equation 16 here is the same as equation 14 except for eh, this element here, yeah, which is different from this element, yeah? All the other elements are the same, but they are the same equation, yeah? They mean the same thing, yeah? They are not different equations. Okay, why do we need these two equations? Because in some questions, they don't give you a breakdown of total equity, yeah? They don't give you common stock. Some questions give you only total equity, yeah? Or the change in total equity, therefore, in such cases, you need equation 16, okay? But in some cases, uh, some problems, they give you the breakdown of equity. They give you the common stock. They give you the retained earnings, yeah? Cumulative retained earnings and so on. Uh, in those problems, then you can use this, yeah? This formula, if you like. As I mentioned, if you are lost in deriving, yeah? Uh, these equations, okay? Don't worry. All you have to remember is this equation and this equation. Yeah, we'll come back to this. This is a long equation. Okay, I'll show you how you can uh, recall yeah, these equations in a structured manner yeah, in the next slide. Yeah? Okay, so what we are doing now is uh, we have uh, expanded the equation previously. Yeah? Now what we are going to do is we try and shrink. Yeah? We reduce the expansion, yeah. That means we we try and summarize this expansion into uh, more manageable components, yeah. So what we do is we uh, divide the long equation, yeah, the equation number fourteen and sixteen that we saw in the previous slide, into smaller components, yeah. That means we take some elements from that equation and we divide them, yeah. We put them into one component. For example, EBIT plus depreciation minus tax, yeah? This is equals to OCF, yeah? OCF stands for operating cash flow, all right? Now, the next equation, okay, or the next component, yeah? This is one component, this is another component, yeah? So, equation 17, yeah, is actually a component of the large equation, yeah? The general equation that we saw in uh, equation 14 and 16 in the previous slide. Okay, so the second component is change in net fixed asset plus depreciation. This is equals to net capital spending, yeah? Now, change in current assets minus change in current liabilities is called net working capital change, yeah? NWCC, all right? So, these three elements, okay, these three elements will make up the left-hand side of the equation that we saw, yeah, in equation 14 and 16. Now, these two components will make up the right-hand elements of the equation, yeah, uh, of equation 14 and 16. So, here you have interest minus change in long-term debt is equals to, now, this is cash flow to creditors, yeah, CFTC, okay, this is the cash flow to creditors, and this is dividend minus change in common stock or you can write this as net income minus change in equity, yeah? This make up the cash flow to shareholders, CFTS, yeah? Shareholders or uh, stockholders. That is equation 21, yeah? 
All right, so we can replace these equations into equation 14 or 16. There we get this, yeah? these three elements, note this, yeah? OCF minus NCS, yeah? not plus, yeah? but minus NCS. Operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus net working capital change must be equal to the cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to shareholders. So this is uh, the simplified equation. Yeah? So this equation number 22 is actually 14 and 16. But rather than uh, expanding this, what we have done is we have reduced the expansion. Yeah? We have sh shrunk it into smaller components. We have three components on the left and two components on the right. Okay, note here, yeah? when you, you try to memorize, remember that these are negative signs here yeah negative negative but here there's positive yeah note that okay now what we do is we uh, shrink it further yeah the equation we are going to shrink it further okay this ocf minus ncs minus nwcc uh, the three elements that we saw on the left hand side of equation number 22 is actually CFFA. What is CFFA? CFFA is cash flow from assets. These are the cash flows from assets. Yeah, and then the two elements in uh, in equation twenty two on the right. Okay, CFTC and CFTS. Okay, these two make up the cash flow to capital providers because stockholders and creditors are the capital providers. Yeah. These elements are cash flow from using the uh, businesses or firms' assets. All right. Therefore, we can replace this equation, these two equations, into equation 22. Therefore, we can say that CFFA must be equal to CFTCP. Yeah? So, cash flow from assets must be equal to cash flow to capital providers. Okay. So, that is what we have done. Yeah? So, we started from assets equals to liabilities plus equity then we expanded the equation now we have reduced it back to this yeah, equation and this equation must be true yeah all right now what we are going to do now is uh, see all these equations in a cascading manner yeah, into one framework okay so this is cffa cash flow from assets is must be equal to cash flow to capital providers yeah this is where we ended up with yeah, in the previous slide now we are going to look at the expansion yeah now cffa is made up of three components operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus net working capital right and then the CFTCP, cash flow to capital providers, is made up of two components, which is cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to uh, shareholders. Now, each of these three elements can be broken down. Yeah? OCF, or operating cash flow, is made up of three components, earnings before interest and tax plus depreciation minus tax. Now, net capital spending is this net capital spending is change in net fixed asset plus depreciation yeah and net working capital change will be this yeah change in net working capital or change in uh, current assets minus change in current liabilities yeah now we have two components here okay so we expand that here cftc or cash flow to creditors is made up of interest minus change in long-term debt and cfts or cash flow to shareholders is made up of dividend minus change in common stock or net income minus change in equity yeah so this is a full range of equations yeah that you would need to understand or remember in order to solve problems with cash uh, uh, problems about cash flow statement yeah all right, and uh, in the next slide, we are going to show you a variation of this. Yeah, the variation will be here. You have changes in yeah this change delta delta symbol yeah, but we replace this delta symbol with uh, 
another symbol yeah, which is uh, two symbols yeah? each change will uh, will be replaced with two elements yeah and we'll see that in the next slide